I think it's almost better, you know, with the style of painting that I'm doing, uh, not to get fussy, too fussy with my focal point. I like to leave, leave it. Today may be the most interesting and possibly unusual of all 273 days. What do you think, Jill? Well, yeah, I want people to have fun. I, I want people to explore possibilities and see, you know, what is possible um, and something where you can explore your own creativity. So what are you going to do, Jill? This is, by the way, this is Jill Basham. <laughs> <Welcome>. <laughs> Yeah, so what I'm going to do is start with a blank canvas. And actually, I, you know, to keep myself interested, I like to come from the perspective, oftentimes, of um, just starting with the paint and, and exploring shapes and then taking that those shapes into something that's more realistic and it then becomes a landscape. But oh, I'm not oh, quite sure cool. where it's going. When I, when I was a kid, you just reminded me of something I haven't thought of for 3,000 years. And that was, and I was a kid. I remember watching a television show. I don't know if it was local or national, but there was a whiteboard or a, you know, a, a flip sheet. And the guy said, "Okay, write three or four numbers on it." And then he went up and took those three or four numbers using the shapes and made it into a scene or a person or something. So, what we're going to do is kind of similar to that, except you're just going to put blobs of paint out and see what happens, right? Sort of. Uh, yes. And you know what, uh, Eric, that's actually reminds me of something I did when I was a kid. Also, I would, uh, you know, we didn't have uh, um, iPads to take to restaurants. We had the napkins and pens. And honestly, you know, we would take turns sketching and then uh, the other person would finish it and it would become something. Uh, and it was a fun game. And I think it really does open open uh, ideas up for people. What a great idea. Well, this is going to be fun. Well, Jill, we're going to take a quick break, make a couple of announcements, and then you can get all set up and we'll be right back. Uh, we got to get to the fun. And the fun is finding out what kind of crazy, silly things Jill has for us. Today. <laughs> it is fun, too. Uh, and I found, you know, for myself, I, um, I, you know, I can get bored sometimes with with the process or, or trying to stay within a mold. And um I might have a little bit of ADD, I don't know, but I like to approach things differently. So when, when someone says, well, how do you do this? And I say, well, you know, it depends on, you know, the day or how I would like to approach it. Anyway, I like a challenge. Um, and so I'm gonna challenge myself on live on television <laughs> right now on Facebook. And, well, no um, pressure. I mean, there's, yeah. there's really ten, tens of thousands of people will see this <laughs> in, in the replays. So, and, you uh, know, I ordered some some uh, canvases from Blick. I typically like to work on linen, um, but you know that didn't come in. So I uh, I gessoed a, a wood panel and I gessoed it differently than I've ever uh, gessoed it before. <laughs> so I'm putting a lot of obstacles in my path, but I kind of like it. Um, All right, Blick. <laughs> by the way, is is uh, they're not a sponsor of this show, but they're becoming a sponsor of our podcast and and a big sponsor at, uh, at Plein Air Convention and through, throughout the Plein Air Magazine. And it's a, a great resource if you're looking for art supplies online. It's Blick.com. So uh, what I'm going to do is actually uh, what we talked about before, which is start in with a shape and not actually know what direction I'm going. Um, there are certain uh, landscapes that attract me and that I have in my memory bank. Um, so I love oceans, um, mountains. And uh, you, if you go to my website, you can see I obviously like uh, clouds. So, um, so anyway, once I start, and this is what I might typically do, it's not just a fun exercise, which I encourage you all to do and try but it's something that I do almost on a regular basis in my studio. Um, so uh, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and start. And like I said, I, I'm not looking at a photo reference. Um, I'm just uh, using uh, first off my abstract design and then going in and getting a little bit of detail. All right, so. let's get started. This okay. is fun. <laughs> Uh, can you, uh, by the way, can you real quickly, is your palette something you can hold up so they can see it? 
sure. Uh, Everybody I, likes to know about brushes and colors and panels. Well, one thing with me is I um, am a messy painter, so I prefer to have. Um, can you hold it up where we can yeah. see it? There we go. I prefer to have disposable um, palette uh, papers, and I forget. I think this is called gray matters, but anyway. Um, so, so I have a ti titanium zinc white, uh, a cool lemon yellow, a medium uh, cad yellow, Indian yellow, uh, which I have a fascination with right now, a uh, cad red light, a lizard and crimson, a yellow ochre. And I don't know how to pronounce this, but it's uh, asphaltum, asphaltum. Asphaltum. <laughs> okay. Uh, a cerulean blue and an ultramarine blue. And then uh, this is a uh, Galkid gel by Gamblin. It comes in a tube. Is that, if I'm, I think that's, um, and I've started pre-mixing a color uh, and this yeah. is obviously a very dark value. And I'm gonna start laying that on to um, my, my uh, panel and see, see what happens. I'm gonna teach you a trick. Okay. All right, you're gonna you're gonna love this trick. You will never be able to live without this trick ever again. All right, you ready? <laughs> so the problem that you just had on your palette, where the where the paper flew down, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, sometimes when you're mixing with a paper palette, the paper will move or something, and that's that's a problem. And I use paper palette exclusively too. I didn't used to because somebody said, "Oh, professionals don't do that," but. Then when I saw Joe McGurl do it, I figured it was okay. <laughs> but uh, I always have that problem. Or if I'm out plein air painting, the wind will blow and it'll it'll go. So I buy them in bulk and I take them to the uh, Kinko's or, or not Kinko's anymore, FedEx office. And they have what they call padding paste. It's basically, it's what they put on the end of paper to make it into a pad. Uh -huh. I have them pad uh, three of the four sides. And it's already padded on one side, so I'm adding two more sides. I just and, and that way, when the wind hits it or anything happens, it doesn't blow. That so is, yeah, that's a great idea. You, you, know, you can I, buy. You can actually buy. I used to be a printer, so you can buy a little jar of padding paste and just do it yourself. That's a great idea. Well, you know, I've been using painters tape. Uh, just you know, when on a windy day when I'm plein air painting. Uh, and that really doesn't do a fantastic job. It sort of just gets me by, but, but your ideas are really great. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, here we go. Let's okay. get started. Okay. So, you know, I tend to be a fast painter and, um, I think you might, you know, you might be, might call it in, more intuitive painting oftentimes. Uh, so I really uh, dive right in. Uh, of course, uh, you're thinning your paint with yes. Gamsol or something. I am. It is Gamsol. Yeah. And you know, design is one of my um, loves. I love a, a wonderful design in a painting. So when I'm laying in, I'm, I'm thinking about that. I'm not necessarily right now thinking about what it is but I am thinking about the design itself. You know, and this is fun. And, and uh, you know, it's sort of letting yourself go, allowing yourself not to have that, um, you know, I must do this and I must copy this photo and it needs to be, you know, a certain way. I think this opens uh, windows to creativity that may be, um, you don't realize that you have, um, and it's, it's really going back to childhood and letting yourself, um, be that child. And that's fun for me. Yeah. What would be a really interesting challenge now would be to turn it completely upside down. Exactly. I, of... Actually, let's do that. All right. Okay. <laughs> that's what I do. I mean, that's actually my day in the studio. Um, really? Don't yeah. get paint on that beautiful blue sweater. <laughs> it already has paint on it, Eric. <laughs> All my clothes have paint. Yeah. My wife says you have two kinds of clothes, clothes that have paint on it and clothes that are about to have paint on it. Okay. So, you know, 
I, I might have had a preconceived notion of maybe where I was going once I started to lay in that shape. Uh, but now I'm seeing other possibilities. So let's see. I just you really screwed you up when I, when I did that because no. now that, that darkness, that's, that'd be tough to make it a sky, wouldn't it? No, not at all. No. no. Not, no, you, you know, if you go through my website, uh, you'll notice that I appreciate a stormy sky and uh, nocturnes. So it's, um, it's actually, I, I love that. I love that challenge. I'm glad you asked me to turn it upside down. And I employ paper towels <laughs> a lot. Yeah. You're like me. You use the blue industrial. <laughs> the what? The blue paper towels. I love them. Yes, yes, yeah. You know, there's nothing like, what? what is it? Bob Ross used to say, uh, he used to say happy accidents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, I think there's truth in that. And so I'm taking away in certain spots now. And, you know, you can take your paper towel and actually, uh, if, you, if you press it lightly, you can make on that thin. You know, I do appreciate tonalism. I'm not sure that uh, I, I'm I don't necessarily fit into the mold of being a strict tonalist, um, but but I definitely appreciate um, that aspect of, of art. And already for me, I'm seeing uh, a stormy sky. Um, I live uh, near the Chesapeake Bay. So near the bay, there's a lot of marshes and that low horizon line with the sky um, above. And I can, you know, for me, I'm starting to see that. You know, and I think also this allows, um, allows an artist to explore their emotional qualities in their work. Um, and, uh, you know, really I, I do plein air painting, <clears throat> obviously, but, uh, but I enjoy the idea of then taking those memories of being out at certain spots and then taking it into the studio and seeing where I can take. And I would say that what happens is um, it's sort of like sifting the emotions of the scene that I've seen into, um, on, you know, with, onto canvas. So I think what happens is you leave behind all of the details that maybe you didn't need to begin with. Um, and you leave the, the emotional, the emotional quality of what you're painting, uh, behind. And values, you know, I'm trying to express values here. So I didn't know I was going to do a marsh painting, Eric. <laughs> well, I didn't. I didn't either. <laughs> Never in a thousand years would I have thought of a marsh painting. <laughs> wow. Well. Like I said, I do live near the bay, so that is a constant um, um, inspiration for me. But I also love to travel, and uh, I just got back from Texas not too long ago. Where'd you go? Uh, San Angelo. Um, so I guess you'd call it cent central or, or western. Oh, were you a part of that uh, plein air group there, that event? That's what I, that's where I was. Yes. That's yeah. a great, they, that's a great show. I understand. Yes. In Plein Air, Texas. Yeah. And they, um, they had it going this year, which was remarkable, I think. And they did a good job of social distancing and, uh, yeah. nobody died. That's good. Nobody died. <laughs> no. And it was, it was really great. 
Yes. You know, where I live, you have that broad horizon line um, that you can see for, for miles. And so I think that's what attracts me to a cloudscape is because I can see that. Um, but what I'm trying to, where I'm going, I think, is showing um, the idea of a distant tree line, uh, the marsh coming along. Um, and there again, I'm thinking about, while I'm doing this, I'm thinking about values, um, thinking about, as I said, design, uh, the flow of the eye and how, that, how this can work. Um, because you made me turn it upside down. <laughs> I didn't make you. I just want to make <laughs> it's for the record. I didn't make you. I just I just suggested it. It was for now. It was so if, if you screw it up, it's it's all on you. It's all on you. <laughs> well, you know what I'm going to do is just show you all my successful paintings after this. <laughs> all right, that works. I think. I think, uh, like I said, I, I really do encourage others to give, um, give it a go. There's, there's really, you know, you can fail for sure. And I think I fail frequently, um, but I actually encourage failure. And, the, and um, because I think you grow and you learn from your failures just as much or if not more than your successes. So, so I'm willing to fail for all of you all. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you have a lot of guts. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's guts. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's just, it's actually not guts. I think actually it's just, um, it, it's, it's pushing away from all that stuff that I think we as adults carry with us um, and uh, get a, that, that horrible word of fear. We get afraid to try things. Um, and um, I, I'm just encouraging everyone else to go ahead and, and give, give things a try. You don't know until you've tried. So we have this sort of a, here, we have a, a distant tree line and the marsh scape coming in. And, you know, I might start adding some color. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> we so. are having fun. <laughs> <clears throat> People seem that? to be digging it. What's that? People are digging it. Oh, good. And is that just a paintbrush from the hardware store? It absolutely is, yes. Oh, you changed brushes because you're dipping into the white. I am, yeah. And I don't even mind. I mean, if it starts dripping, I'm still pretty thin here. You know, that's okay. I can, I can retrieve it. And that's the thing. I think um, there's a tendency for artists to almost be too precious, um, depending on what they're doing. And I think it's important to try to um, let some of that preciousness go. At least to have fun in the studio. I also encourage draw, uh, taking drawing classes. Um, I think that's a good good foundation for painting. Um, I think no matter where you want to go with your painting, even if it's more abstract, I think it's important to have a solid foundation in drawing. So I think what I'm doing here is creating, um, I love atmosphere. And uh, so what I'm trying to do is create the sense of depth and atmosphere in this. And obviously, what are we like um, 10 minutes in at this point? <laughs> yeah, you got another 20 to 25 minutes. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I have time, but I there's something about the immediacy of working quickly to create uh, a design that can really, um, honestly, I think it can, can work if you think almost um, more right brain than left brain with this. But like I said, sometimes it can absolutely fail. But that's okay. Still working with the big brushes, and I, I think that that's a good uh, way to start. Is starting with the big brushes, starting with uh, with thinner washes, 
um, and then um, moving on to smaller brushes. Did you have any questions for me, Eric? Yeah, what the heck are you painting now? <laughs> it's going to be a tree? <laughs> no, it's the sky. Ah. Oh, the tree line. Yes, the distant tree line. Yeah. Oh, that's the tree line in the back. Okay. Yes. Right. You don't see, Eric? <laughs> yeah, it looks more like mountains to me. Does it? Yeah. Oh, this this is mountains. No, the way distant mountains. Yeah. Oh, see, that's the thing. And that's why I, I love doing this exercise is because, you know, you can see different things in, in it. And even if I flipped it over again, you know, I might see another possibility um, that I had, you know. And this is another thing I like to do, which is sort of dragging the paint as it's drying across and um, sort of taking away rather than adding. Or, you know, actually, you know, there's nothing wrong with destroying, <laughs> destroying what you already have in order to rebuild again. Um, okay. I tend to like a limited palette. Um, I, uh, you know, although what I showed you was quite a few colors of cool and warms of, of um, each primary color, I do appreciate almost a monochromatic uh, painting as well. So this is my water here that I'm having, and the, and the water reflects the sky. Here. Okay. All right. And I'll have that lead back. And I think part of the problem uh, people run into with water uh, as it recedes is it's not laying flat. And um, so that's something uh, that is can be tricky and it's a matter of almost having more land coming together than what they uh they think so you, you express a mid-ground here and then you might have a, a distant water line here And then the foreground water, which isn't reflecting as much. Somebody okay. along the way told me that <clears throat> that it's very important. The temptation is to put put that water in at an angle in the distance, even though that may be what you're seeing. But if it's if it's not laying pretty much pretty much straight horizontally, it won't read like water. Do you right. find that to be true? I do find that to be true. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. It's, it's flatter than what people would imagine um, as far as the angles. So I've got a sort of a gray, uh, cloudy day, and I think what I'll do is have a little bit of light peeping through the bottom here, a little bit of warmth. What kind of brush is that? Uh, it's a flat, let's see, it's Princeton flat long, and okay. it's a 10. All right. I like it. But also, I'm not, you know, necessarily beholden to, uh, you know, a specific type of brushes. 
And I don't think, you know, if you're listening that it's necessary to um, follow a, a specific regimen of anything. And I think that that's sort of why I decided to do what I'm doing today is because I, I want to encourage people to try, um, try different brushes, try different surfaces. Um, uh, just, just come at your studio um, or come into your studio as if it's almost like a, a laboratory where you're experimenting. Um, and I think, you know, you, you, you will fail, you'll fail a lot, but you'll also have um, some successes or some revelations for, for future work. Uh, um, and I think it just promotes growth, honestly. Yeah, well, that's the old joke, and in, 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 it's how do you spell how do you spell uh, growth? Failure, F A I. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, if people I, would learn to embrace their failures, they they would be a lot less frustrated. I agree. You know, and <clears throat> oftentimes the sky color is reflected in the ground plane um, and obviously in the water itself too. Um, I think that's important to remember. I think uh, artists can get too wrapped up into making pretty colors and maybe, you know, the best thing actually is to simplify and not have so many colors and have those colors integrated in both your sky and in your ground plane. And I guess maybe that's where the tonalism comes in. Yeah. Well, we all need to learn to paint monochrome paintings right. almost before we learn to bring out color. That's when I teach in my paint by note system. That's what I, I say is you, you, you know, learn to paint it takes to put color puts a lot of pressure on. And even though that's the jewel and the fun stuff, right. if you don't learn to paint in a monochrome, uh, it's going to make things a lot more difficult. Right. The other thing is, uh, and I've had to learn this the hard way is that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm one for the frosting, so to speak. I love it when, you know, the magic happens and, you know, especially when I'm doing a demo, you know, I want to show everybody, Oh, well, this is, and this is how the magic happens. But honestly, that takes time um, and you can't throw in those um, that magic, which might be the lightest lights until the very end. And you have to resist, uh, resist doing that. So. You know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Also, I, you know, for me, I, uh, I like indications of what things are, but I really resist trying to be too literal. Um, I, I, I like uh, leaving things um, unsaid a bit. And um, I like it when uh, viewers can, can take a look at my work and maybe question things or say, okay, well, what's going on here? Although I do respect um, highly rendered work, it's just not my it's just not my nature, and I you know I I recognize that. I like to you know try to express the foreground, the, the area closest, uh, and then sort of the mid ground as well as the, the background and my landform. And I think that helps to uh, show distance. And as you know, you may know this, but uh, my rule of thumb is uh, the closer the land mass, typically the warmer it is. Um, and as it recedes, it gets cooler. Um, and also um, grayer and lighter as it recedes. So somebody should put that in the comments. Warmer, closer, warmer. Typically, yeah. And what'd you say about grayer? Grayer and lighter. Bluer. Grayer and lighter. 
cooler, lighter. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> and probably and, and less yellow. Right. Of course, yes. Yellow, <clears throat> yellow drops out. You know, I um, I love plein air painting, uh, but I think during COVID, it's given me time to do more studio painting. Um, it seems like I, I'm not sure why that is because I could go out there, but I'm enjoying. I'm I really am enjoying this um, the time in the studio just to explore. Yeah, I think a lot of people are having a lot of fun. Okay, um, maybe I'll try to show you or express, you know, the layers and the clouds above. Um, okay. And obviously this is something that I'm not gonna necessarily be finished with this um, after we talk. I'll work on it some more and see where it goes. I I'm kind of liking the direction that it is right now. Um, and lately I have been doing a lot of uh, work where it's on and off the easel uh, quite a bit. And I think it's because I'm harder on myself now. I don't know if you find that as you learn more, you tend to get more critical of your, your own uh, work. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so I don't feel like- now, Anytime you experience growth, you see new things in, in your work that are problematic. Right. And you have to struggle to get through them. Right. Well, I'm kind of liking the surface. Uh, I've never, I've never brushed on the gesso like I did, you know, prior to this broadcast. So it's interesting to see how that's working. And I'm thinking as I'm doing the, these brush strokes and blending about design. Um, so my idea is to have it leading in this water. Um, and then I, you know, coming across here, this is sort of the window up and I might have some cloud forms here. And then I would sort of like to lead it, lead the eye. All right. Screen. Well, you've got 15 minutes to pull it off. <laughs> okay. Well, actually, I'm I not sure that's right. Uh, you got, yeah, yeah, you got 15 minutes. Okay. Well, you've got diagonals, and uh, diagonals are important in your composition. Um, Why? It creates a certain sense of energy for your eye, you know, a, a person's eye to follow through the painting and excitement, whereas flat lines tend to, you know, calm things down, but also it potentially might, might flatten it so much that it might not be that interesting. Well, what I like about this is that you've got the piece in the lower third, and then you've got chaos up above. <laughs> Isn't that life? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, don't I you know, don't put it past me to have a dramatic sky because I definitely um, am prone to uh, my storms, stormy skies. Hey, a storm is coming. <laughs> Okay, so now I might come back in with my paper towel and explore what I can do with lightening some values in the sky just with just with wiping away. So. And that, you know, I might then find certain clouds that I would like to have stay um, closer to uh, the viewer, like this blue area here, I almost would like to have closer, I think, um, as a shape to balance. So I think what I'm doing is uh, this shape here is now being balanced by this shape here. Um, it's a counterbalance. Oh, I just left fingerprints, uh, which I find to be interesting. I do a lot of stepping away and I'm not doing as much of that. Uh, Hard to do that in this environment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I do encourage that uh, very much. I think that uh, 
there's nothing like walking away from your canvas to see um, to see what's going on and uh, the potential, you know, where things might not be working. The other thing I do, like I said, is um, take time to, uh, if I get to a stopping point, I'm thinking, well, I'm not quite sure, you know, where I want to go now with this. You know, I'll, I'll let it uh, sit <laughs> Uh, in the living room um, on the mantle, I just, you know, so I'm glancing at it every now and then. Um, my poor mantle, I need to repaint it, but, <laughs> but it's a good way to sort of get perspective. Another thing is to take photo, a photograph of your work to see, and then all of a sudden you're seeing it from a way um, that you haven't before and you can see errors in your, what you might be doing. Um, you know, I could put a structure in, in the background. Um, or not, but might, you know, I kind of like the idea of, of popping maybe uh, very subtly a, a structure here, a house, or I guess, it, you know, ultimately it would be, it could be a focal point there. And I'm thinking about the direction of the lines that I've already created and how having a focal point there mm -hmm. would draw the eye in. Um, so let me see. I'll go for a smaller brush just to show. I'm not sure how much time. But um, there again, I, I think it's almost better, you know, with the style of painting that I'm doing, uh, not to get fussy too fussy with my focal point. I like to leave, leave it. Um, sort of like if, if somebody's standing back 10 feet, uh, they would definitely say, okay, there's the house. But if they get close, um, well, that's just a, you know, a blob of white paint. Um, and I think that's part of the magic of, of stepping back frequently from your work is you can then create um, the idea of things uh, without getting too wrapped up into details. And that for some reason appeals to me. Makes sense. <laughs> sense. I like the sounds, sounds <laughs> of the brush on the board. Yeah. And you know how when it's maybe, you know, there's a storm clouds and you have a bit of rain coming down, you know, that I like to express too. Right. But, you know, this is fun because I really didn't know where I was going with this. And no, I, but it's, it's cool. That's really been fun to <laughs> watch this develop. Uh-huh. And I'm thinking, I think I'm thinking more of the, uh, more of the fall type of look for the marsh right now. Um, yeah. Well, you get a little of that Indian yellow in there. That'd be fun. Yes. So you said you're obsessed with Indian yellow lately. What's that all about? You know, I, I find that it makes such beautiful deep greens. Um, I, really? yeah, I, I love, especially if you add uh, a touch of, um, well, obviously, ultramarine blue, the Indian yellow, and um, a little bit of cad red light is what I've been doing with that. But, um, yeah, so this might bring it alive a bit by adding touches of green. And this was created using uh, Indian yellow, ultramarine. And, and cad red. Yeah, yeah. Yummy. <laughs> and here again, you know, if you're using Indian yellow, that's a warmer color. And so you definitely want to cool it and lighten it as, um, as it recedes in the distance. Yeah. Yeah. 
or even go for, you know, reducing the yellow quite a great deal and going for a cooler yellow and then to, you know, a grade down version and almost re reducing it entirely. So I, it, it, maybe this would be a really good time since we're kind of slim on time. Uh -huh. is maybe this would be a time to kind of show how you would make color recede because you talked about that. Right. Would you be willing to do that? Sure. All right. So let me. <clears throat> Not to mess with your painting, but I think, <laughs> no, I, I I think you know, you've been talking about it. I think there are people watching who are like, what the heck in the world is she right. talking about? Right. Well, you know, I think, um, I think that is important. And, um, and so, and I don't mind, and this is not, you know, this is not precious. Uh, my painting is not precious uh, and I can show you that. So this, let me, let me do something really warm. All right. And it's dark um, because you can lighten on top of that, but, um, but this is a very warm, uh, there's quite a bit of ultramarine blue in it and pad red light. And then, of course, the Indian yellow there. And I can, let's see, I can vary that shade a little bit. Okay, so that might be, you know, the foreground area there, the, the warm, okay. And then as it recedes, you are going, I'm going to switch brushes to a bigger brush here. So it's lightning. And cooling a bit. And of course, uh, you know, sometimes when you first put down the brush, you may not have the right shape or the right value. Um, but you, you know, and I think that might be a bit light. Um, I, was, I was wondering if it maybe was too dark <clears throat> because of, if you were trying to match the value of what was under it. You think that's this is too dark? Well, I wondered if you were trying to match the light value that you were laying over it or if that was just a, a placeholder. So no, I don't think it's too dark. Okay. <laughs> I just I just yeah. <clears throat> so this might be a mid a mid. Um you're you're getting cooler. And of course, blending, you want to blend the, you know, you want to have some blending going on. In fact, this is when I employ my paper towel again, or you know. You're blending together, so you can see that recession a bit. Of course, we're going to spring now with our my color palette. Um, it's all right. <laughs> and then I'm cooling it and graying it, adding more white, and then that's going to push it back further. And you also lowered the value, made it a lighter value. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a mistake I think that often people make is that they don't realize the size of the foreground versus the uh, distant um, atmospheric background. And oftentimes that foreground can be, you know, can go up quite high until you hit your midground, which is, could be a narrow swath. And then to your 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 more distant um, horizon line um, is is actually more in a narrow spot I find than your foreground, which take, can take up quite a bit of of that space. Cool. Well, we're down to our about our last three minutes. Okay. You know, part of the what I love about being able to come into the studio and um, just sort of start something and paint is that I can tr I can travel to this location now in my mind, um, which is 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 you know a wonderful thing to do <laughs> during COVID. Uh, so I encourage everybody to you know think about where they might like to be. Um, you know, where would you like to travel to and, um, and give it a go. Travel to that place. You want to go to France? Yeah. You know, paint paint France. Yeah, great idea. Yeah. I want to be there. That's beautiful. It's really nice. You're going to be in France, ah. No, I want to be there where you're. Oh, you want to be here? Yeah. Well, come on yeah. down to Maryland. Come to the eastern yeah. shore of Maryland. <laughs> All right. 
Well, actually, come to Plein Air Easton next time uh, they have it. I've been invited. I, I, at some point, I'll do it. Yeah, they would love to have you. I'm sure. It's always in conflict with something else that I have going on in my life. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. so now you're going to put down the brush. Okay. You're going to come back on camera. <laughs> okay. Uh, good. So you wanted to show us your studio for a second. You want to okay, just give yeah. us a quick, I'll, quick I'll overview? You, I'll show you certain parts, not everything, because um, some parts I, you know, I'd rather not share. <laughs> yeah, I get it. All Eric, right. I'm a messy painter. <laughs> okay, let me. That's, that's lovely, by the way. Oh, thank you. That was fun. Okay. Am I facing it the right way? Are you seeing? Yeah. Yeah. We're seeing some paintings. Okay. So I know you can't see what's going on. Yeah. So this is You're Texas. a little close. You're a little close. No, I'm a little close. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I'm a director here. <laughs> yeah. Can you see now? <laughs> yeah. We see part, we see the top two paintings. Okay. So, uh, so the top one with the big blue sky, that's Texas. And that's just, that's near San Angelo painted during plein air, Texas. And, um, and that was a lot, it was a gorgeous day. And of course I went for the expansive view. Um, and then let's see, of course I like my gray skies too. And, um, I don't know what you can see, but this is, <laughs> we can see it. okay. Yeah. This right. is sort of a stormy atmosphere. And again, uh, the clouds, this is, um, this is the ocean, obviously, with a storm yeah. cloud coming above. Nice. Um, I, Kim Vanderhoek and I have been focusing on From Above paintings for about uh, two years for a show. Oh, you have a book out. That's right. I, I'll yeah. show that book real quickly. Yeah. I think I, yeah. So the book is called From Above, featuring mm -hmm. artwork by Jill Basham and Kim Vanderhoek. Yes. And uh, they can find that book at your website, I assume. That's correct. Yeah. And um, let me just pull that up real quickly so I've got it on here. Uh, website is jillbasham.com, and you can add the books slash books to the end of it. Right. All right. Thank Jill, you. this has been fabulous. Ah. Thank you so much for uh, for giving us a, a, a little slice of your life and, and for being so bold to experiment today. You did a beautiful job. <laughs> 